Hi everyone, today we are going to go through edge to edge quilting and we're going to start from the beginning and go all the way through. Every step of loading the quilt to choosing the batting and thread, setting up your machine and choosing a pattern to quilt. So we will, I will teach you a couple of different ways to do a few of these things. Please keep in mind there are so many ways to do things and you can learn them all. Um, you can go out on the internet and there are so many videos. Here are just a couple of ways that I like to do things. So we're going to start with loading the quilt. And um, for this particular project, I've chosen a backing that's 108 inches wide. So I've cut the short length of my quilt. My quilt is about 54 inches square. And I've cut me um, about 60 inches. I like to have at least three or four inches on each side for the clamps. And I am not going to trim the length of this backing because I have two nice straight selvage edges here. And when you have 108 wide batting, it's folded twice. So it's folded in half and then folded in half again. And so it's really hard to keep that cut straight. So if you're pinning that cut on, you, you probably won't have a very straight edge and you're also assuming that it was rolled onto the bolt straight, so there's a lot of, of ifs that come into play. So I just like to keep it long, keep my selvage edges so that I can pin them onto the leader, and I always choose to load my quilt that way with the selvage edges um, attached to the leader, so I know I have a nice straight line, unless the backing's directional or pieced a certain way, or if I'm using Minky. I'm using Minky, I like to pin the stretchy to the leader and have the, the selvage, the non-stretchy when I roll it. So let's uh, show you a couple different ways. First, I'm gonna show you how to pin it on and then I will show you the leader grip snap. So first we'll pin, and there are a couple different ways to manage your pins. There's a magnetic bowl that sticks to the, the tracks and the bar. Um, I like these little wrist pin cushions because they're really easy to manage as I pin the quilt on. So I am going to start by laying my backing right side up on the table and finding the center of the back. So I'm just gonna fold it in half and find the middle. I like to stick a little pin in the center of that backing. And then with the right side facing me, I'm going to also find the center of my leaders, which should be marked with a little hash. And I'm going to line those up with both edges pointing up toward the ceiling. So just match the edges up and remove that center pin and place it right in the leader, about a quarter inch down. Then I like to move to the left first and I, I take about a foot and put another pin and then another foot and put another pin. And then I go back and fill in because it's just a little bit easier that way for everything to stay where it needs to stay. So I'll go back and fill in this side with these pins. And the pins don't necessarily have to touch each other. In fact, they can be, you can have about an inch between pins if you'd like. Then I'll go from the center to the right, go out about a foot, put in a pin, go out about another foot, put in another pin and then just head backward. Just inserting a pin every every so often. You don't want them too far apart, uh, but if they're too close together, when you take them out, you will definitely stab yourself. So this is what I found works the best. So that didn't take too terribly long. The top is right side facing me. So when I toss it over my machine, I have the back of the backing here to put the quilt on. Okay, next I will show you leader grips. Okay, the second way you can load a quilt is by using leader grips. What leader grips are is there's a tube, a little blue tube that goes down the casing of your leaders. That stays there. And then there are these little clear clips that clip onto that bar to hold your fabric in place. So I have found that the easiest way for me to do this is to lay my leader on the table and then find the center of my backing. I now have my backing laying wrong side up across my machine with the selvage edge 
toward me. And I'm going to find the center of the backing. And I'm actually going to put a little pin in it because I might shift it around a little bit. So once my pin's in there, I'm going to lay this backing out so that it lays over the top of this lip with the center mark matching up. And I have the selvage hanging over this lip just a little ways. So if you can see, just hanging over about a half an inch, quarter of an inch. I like to put the small piece on first because it's just easier to snap on. So I put it on the middle and then you can continue and snap on the other pieces. Now there's all different sizes, so if you have a really long quilt, you're fine. Just snap it all the way to the end so it doesn't come off while I'm quilting. This one's a little trickier with the machine in the way, but you can snap it on and then just continue making the adjustments you need to and continue snapping to the end. And then that's all there is to it. So now your fabric's attached. And as I roll this up, you'll see that I have the backing loaded with the wrong side up. I have the back pinned on at the top or clipped on, and now I'm going to start rolling. And I'm going to roll the entire backing up. I'm not gonna worry if it rolls crooked a little bit. Um, I'm just gonna make sure it's rolling nice and flat until I see the bottom part. Once I see the bottom, going to pick up my quilt top and I will grab this leader that comes over the top of this stagnant bar up around the belly bar and I'm going to match the center of my backing with the center of this leader and then I'm going to attach the bottom the same way that I attached the top. So I will start in the middle and just like I did the top I'll move down about a foot put in another pin, grab both of these, move down another foot, put in a pin, and I'll do this down both sides until I have the bottom. Now, if you're using leader grips to put on the bottom, you can use the bar to press the leader grips in, or you can unroll the canvas so that you can use the tabletop to press those leader grips in. Either way, it's pretty easy to get, get the bottom attached the same way. So now from the center to the right, this always reminds me of that little saying, one, two, skip the few, 99, 100. I just have to throw some cheesy things in there for my cameraman. All right, so. Now I have got the bottom pinned on, and you see I have some slack that helps me be able to pin on a little bit easier. I'm going to come to the edge here, and I'm gonna start rolling the bottom roller, the backing roller, until I have it a little bit taut. And then I'm going to back roll. So I'm actually going to put my left hand up here on the pickup bar, take the break off, and with my right arm, I'm going to roll this quilt up. You can see that by applying pressure, a little bit of pressure on the pickup bar, it's stretching the backing just a hair so that it rolls straight as I back roll it. Then when I get to the top, I just put the brake back on. All right, now it's time to attach the sides of the back. And I like to use the Velcro clips that come with your gamble to do this. There's also a side grip product that I will show you that goes with the leader grips. I'm having such a time with this top. I can't keep it off the floor. Here are the side grips. Let me show you how these work. It's a short bar that you just place underneath your backing, snap it on, and then you can clip this ribbon to your Velcro clips and attach it near the center. And what that does is just gives you a nice, even hold on the side of your quilt. You'll wanna make sure you have plenty of backing um, for either method actually, so that you don't um, hit a clip or hit 
one of those bars as your hook. And now we will place our bedding right on top and we will do that scrim side down. Typically the scrim side is the bumpy side. We want the scrim side down because batting is needle punched through the scrim. So if your needle is going through batting and then through the scrim, the scrim will keep the batting from bearding through to the back of your quilt. Once that's on, I'm going to put my top on the batting. And then what I like to do is fold the top down and I'm going to take my machine and stitch a line across the top of the batting and the backing. And I wanna do a channel lock line so that I know it's straight. Because if I have this top just a little bit crooked, as I roll, it's gonna get more and more crooked. So I'm going to just take a single stitch channel lock across the top of this quilt to help me line up the um, line of the quilt. So now I'm going to load my bobbin and you always load your bobbin in with it going clockwise and then through a little bobbin case. And I'm going to check my bobbin in the toe gauge to make sure my bobbin tension is good. So I snap my toe case into the toe gauge, go under the first wheel, over the second wheel and through this little hook. And I'm going to pull just gently. My toe is reading about 260, which seems a little bit tight, but it's a little bit tight. So I'm gonna loosen it just a hair and try it again. I can actually loosen it right in the toe gauge with my little tiny screwdriver as well. I'm just lazy. So 250, I'm gonna go with 250. You see how that needle's not jumping around? That means my bobbin was wound correctly and there are no inconsistencies in the bobbin and that the bobbin case is working the way it should as well as the backlash spring inside the bobbin case is working as it should. So I'm gonna go ahead and load that bobbin case in and take this channel lock stitch across the top of my batting. When I cut my thread, I just bring, pull the machine toward me, hook my finger under the thread, come back, take a single stitch and pull it away and it brings my bobbin thread up. And then I'm able to just cut them both off at the quilt. And now I have a nice line that I can line my top up with. Go on over here. And... So I can line this top up with this line. I know it's, it's straight because I channel locked it. That means my quilt will roll straight and get that lined up all the way across. And then I'm ready to stitch it down. Now I float all my quilt tops so I don't stitch, I don't attach the quilt top to the other bar. I just let it float. It gives me a lot of freedom to make adjustments, especially if the quilt isn't square, I can help it end up square. So now I'll go up here and I'll come down just a scant quarter inch. I'm not going to channel lock it this time. You definitely can if you'd like, but I'm just going to stitch across about a quarter inch. Now see how that tried to get away from me a little bit. So I like to keep this index finger ahead of the copper foot. To just kind of keep, I'm gonna keep a little bit of back pressure with my other fingers so that it doesn't try to push the fabric on me. And this way I can keep everything nice and straight as I stitch across. Now when I stitch down the edges, I do like to channel lock it sometimes, especially if it's a border that's been put on kind of wonky, I can channel lock and stitch vertically with a basting stitch just to let my customer know that if you want your quilt straight, you can trim it that way. Um, so if I wanted to do that, I could, 
Otherwise, I just take a very scant, almost eighth of an inch, all the way down this side, cut my thread, and then come over to the other side and stitch this side down as well. I'm doing the same thing, kind of walking my fingers down the fabric as I go so that it doesn't bunch up. I don't get any pleats or anything like that. I always want to cut my threads too because I don't want them to get stuck in one of my wheels. Keeps everything nice and clean. Now I'm ready to audition some thread colors. Thread looks so much different on the cone than it's going to look on the quilt. So sometimes I like to take some threads and just run them across the quilt and across multiple colors of the quilt to see what they're going to look like on the quilt. So these were my first two choices. I brought these out so you could kind of see what the light and dark contrast will do across a quilt. When a quilt has both light and dark colors, I like to stay away from the extreme light and the extreme dark because of this. While this dark looks great on the navy, it really screams out across the white. Same with the white, it looks great across the neutrals, but it really screams out across the navy and the red. This particular color doesn't look like it would go really well, but it actually blends really, really well with a lot of these colors, as does this tan. So, for today, I think I'm going, I actually thought I was gonna use the green at first, but I think I'm gonna go with the tan. And a lot of times customers will need help choosing thread. Um, I always try to give them my opinion and then do whatever they want. I will tell you red thread hardly ever looks good on anything. So I try to stay away from red thread. I don't know why, but it just, it just doesn't play nice with others. So I'm gonna go ahead and glow this and then we'll choose a pattern. When I change my thread, I don't unthread my whole machine. I simply take the cone off, put the new one on, I break my thread or cut it, and then I tie a knot. I put both ends together and do a little slip knot. That way it doesn't come undone as I pull it through my machine. Then I take it here at the needle, take it out of the needle, and just pull that knot all the way through until it's here and ready to cut and re-thread my needle.